Last year, Kitsap Credit Union and the KCU Cares Foundation expanded their efforts by increasing the number of schools that received our financial wellness program at no cost to those schools or to the students. Now we provide free financial education to 21 schools in and around the Puget Sound. To learn how our financial program impacts communities' youth, we have a special guest here with us today, and we've asked Leah Zimmer to join us from Bremerton High School. Leah, it's so great to have you here today, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Glad so, to be here. So one of our favorite subjects, financial wellness and financial capabilities, something that, that, that you enjoy teaching at, at Bremerton High School. Uh, how long have you been at Bremerton High School? I've been at Bremerton since 2010, so going on 12, 13 years. Great. And you have a little bit of history with uh, Kitsap Credit Union as well, correct? I do. Kitsap Credit Union um, offered me my very first job out of college, and I worked in their training department and then later on in their accounting department. Great. So you have, a, you have an insider perspective uh, as to what is financial wellness and, and how a financial nonprofit uh, can really benefit individuals. Absolutely. Great. So um, tell me a little bit about, you know, when we look at financial wellness in the program itself. You know, right now, uh, we're in 21 different high schools. Um, I remember when I was taking accounting in high school, uh, Mr. Puzio said, hey, first two weeks, you're not gonna learn anything about accounting. I'm gonna teach you about personal finance. But it was, uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't mandatory. It wasn't something that, that was required. Is it required at Bremerton High School? It is required. Students need to take a half a semester of um, financial literacy in order to graduate from Bremerton High School. And what types of uh, experiences and outcomes do you see from the, from the program? I see students who feel more confident about making financial decisions moving forward. And I think about, um, what I want for students is for them to be ready for whatever's next for them. And so for some students, what's next for them will be getting a savings and a checking account. Other students, what's next for them is learning how to buy insurance and making their first investments. Is there anything specific like, like students like they say, hey, this is what I love about the program? I think they love a lot of things about the program. I think they like that the program is I'm engaging, it's interactive. There are many parts of the program where students can have choice. Mm -hmm. So they can you know, choose what job they wanna pretend they're going to be as they go through right. the tax simulation and things like that. Um, and they're, they're short and they're, they're just the perfect amount of little nuggets for student learning. Right, and there's, there's a, uh, the reality of things really settles in with students, right? It's like things that they weren't familiar with or maybe they took for granted because mom and dad or, you know, their, their uh, guardians take care of them and take care of those things in their lives mm -hmm. that maybe they're not so familiar with. Are there any like profound moments or, or uh, uh, experiences that, that you've seen with some students where they came back and they were really, you know, uh, thankful for having participate in such a program? Yeah, I've got, of course, lots of cool stories over the years of students telling me that this is so important because it's a life skill. Right. Um, but I have one particular, um, I had a student um, this fall, I got a handwritten thank you card um, talking about the importance of this material. Mm -hmm. And he happened to be a student that took my class um, four years ago as a sophomore. He graduated last year. Um, he is at Stanford University this year, and he said it was the most important thing he learned in high school. Right. Wow. Which is pretty powerful. And, you know, as, as, as we think about, you know, uh, the pace of change and what's happening in, in the financial services world, and it's, it's no longer just a, a checking account. There's other, other products, cryptocurrency, how people make payments through, you know, Venmo and Zelle and, uh, and, and other processes. So... Um, I think about my own daughters at home and, and you know, uh, looking at a statement and balancing out their, their pay history. Students really have a, a different perspective these days when, when they think about managing their, their finances. Are there any expectations that, that you see, you know, coming out of this learning around financial wellness that are coming from, from your students, like future expectations about finance? They definitely see the the digital side of finance and, and you know, 
really running a household. You know, when they're eventually going to be living on their own, they're probably going to set up their financial life a little bit different than their parents did. Right. Um, one example is um, students are using digital payment systems all the time, and that's something that maybe their parents or their grandparents are just starting to figure out. Well, this is the language that they know. Right. Um, they don't have a checkbook. They have a checking account, but they don't have a checkbook. They're using their debit cards and their Venmos and their Apple Pays um, right. to navigate their purchases. Yeah, I think back to, uh, you know, my dad's financial management system was if there was no cash in the wallet, then there was no entertainment for, <laughs> for this weekend, right? But now it, it has, it's in the form of plastic and other, other forms of digital currency, and that, that, is, um, that could present some challenges. Are there any, like, uh, uh, problems that you see that, that, that get identified or that come up as, as students are going through the, this learning process? Well, I think all students learn at a different pace and in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I really like about the program is that it allows students to go back and meet the competencies as many times and reviewing as many right. times as they need. Um, yeah. And there's, uh, for most students, and you mentioned this before, that uh, students enter this space at, at different uh points in time in their in their financial life cycle, right? So there's some students that have a, you know, tremendous need, others may have different types of needs. Uh, how do you see the, the, the program, you know, working for students that have, you know, various needs or skill sets? It covers all of the national standards for financial literacy education, mm -hmm. but I think this is where every student is coming to my class with a different you know, they're on a different step, so to speak, right. um, in regards to some students are navigating, should I get a savings account or should I get a checking account or should I get both? Right. Other students have had those products and services for a couple of years. Maybe they've worked for a couple of years and they're wanting to know more about how do they file their taxes. And so, you know, they're all in a different um, step, I guess I would say, of right. navigating, you know, creating their own financial life. And yeah, that's, what, that's what we have, uh, you know, learned over the years is that, uh, managing your financial life is not programmatic and everyone has different, you know, experiences in life. And, and as those experiences come up, it presents different challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you do some like, you know, uh, reality work with, with the students. So you help them understand, like, you know, if you're going to a job interview and your car breaks down, you know, you have to have, a, you know, some additional funds set aside to, to pay for those car repairs or are those some of the things that that you work with students on to, to help them you know anticipate life's events absolutely we talk about having an emergency fund we talk about having sinking funds saving for large purchases mm -hmm. coming up and how can they go about saving for those things what products what financial products are best for different goals that they have and you know it's hard to ask a high school student who hasn't started life yet right. thinking about their retirement but we we do. We right. ask them just thinking about um, what are the, the things that they could be um, getting ready for now so mm -hmm. that they can retire and, and have choices and, and kind of accomplish some of those goals for later in their life. I always say, Ray, you have to pay yourself first. So, yes. so that helps you understand like what the cost of interest is and, and how you're spending you know, your money. And, and if you create those savings habits early, it creates a, a much better outcome later on in life. Yes. So what advice would you have for other educators like yourself that may be considering offering out you know, uh, this type of curriculum? Well, my advice would be um, that, that this is a really easy program to implement. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to teach financial literacy, so it seems like a real natural fit. Right. But you can offer this program in little bits. Mm -hmm. You can have, um, you know, just it could be a one standalone lesson, and that might just fit their need for their curriculum. Right. Um, I happen to use all of the material um, throughout the course of a year, mm -hmm. um, but I've done it a couple different ways. I've taught summer school before where we offered it all together in kind of one condensed time period. And I also offer it during the school year where we spread it out throughout the school year. And we, you know, we talk about insurance for two weeks and then we work on the insurance wellness module. And so we can separate it and spread it out that way too. It's really simple and user-friendly for teachers mm -hmm and for students. Well, we appreciate all the good work that you're doing and, and your commitment to the students and bringing financial wellness 
you know, to our community. And I know it creates a stronger opportunity for those, those of us that, you know, live and work in this community. And I just want to, you know, thank you for you know, joining us today and sharing a little bit about, you know, your, yourself and the success stories that this program has. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. We're happy to have Kids Up Credit Union partner with us for over a decade. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.